So for my paints, I've got out um, my little mini Masterson Stay Wet palette, and I've got out my titanium white, cobalt blue, and this color here is an. I really like these neutral gray colors. This is N5, and I'm going to use that for the underpaint. And then I've got out some transparent red oxide, some Indian yellow, sap green, transparent brown oxide, and this is some green gold. Um, I thought the center of the daisy had that kind of bright green and some of the stems. I thought it might be fun to, you know, use a different color. So you know, if you don't have green gold, you can easily mix it using some sap green and some Indian yellow. So that's sort of a little hack, pretty much the same color. Indian yellow and sap will kind of make the green gold. I just had it and I thought, oh, I'll put some of that out. So to start with, um, you can do a wash of, you know, like some brown oxide and, you know, some cobalt blue. If you want to get a nice transparent wash like this, and I'm just using some water. I'm don't. I'm not using any mediums or anything. And um, this is just some canvas paper from Michaels. So it's good to practice on. They're only about, uh, if you use your coupon, they're only about $6 to buy. And um, I really like them for, you know, little studies like this. So I'm gonna use a little larger brush so you can create that gray um, using some, either I put out some cobalt and the paint I'm using by the way is golden acrylic. I use golden or something like Liquitex because you wanna use something with a good quality uh, and which has, the paint will have more pigment in it. And um, if you start off using cheap paint, you'll never really create the kind of paintings you want because there's just not enough pigment in the paint. So this gray color is really handy to use because some of my bird paintings or, you know, just when I'm, if I'm gonna paint even in oil, this is like kind of the perfect gray for uh, like, I like to use gray backgrounds in some of my paintings, just kind of gives it a more, a different feel than the, you know, using a colorful background, it kind of creates more of a classic feel. So if you want a quick and easy start, even to an oil painting, just use some of this. And this is that golden neutral gray. And this is number five. They have a whole scale of grays. So there's like a whole pile you can choose from. But anyways, it kind of gives you the idea of um, a darker background. Um, and you want a darker background because, or a dark wash like this, because you're gonna be painting white flowers. So um, I know kind of from teaching kind of some of the struggles that people have when painting daisies. So what people will tend to do is they'll go get some white paint like this. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do what kind of I see people do. So they'll go like this and normally, you know, the backdrop is a little drier, but this works okay. And they'll start going around like this. And then the daisy looks kind of flat. So what you need to know how to do is you need to know how to mix some of the darker whites that you see in the center of the daisy like in the shadows of this reference photo has some nice shadows. Uh, so what you will end up with is kind of childish daisies or, you know, they look like this. And daisies, you know, can look great, I think, any, any way you paint them. But I'm going to paint, I'm going to uh, paint a daisy that sort of, you know, looks a little more uh, just a little bit, uh, <laughs> I don't know the word, but just kind of a little bit more unique in that you kind of have something a little more complex than just some white strokes. And then what ends up happening is they can't, they struggle with getting them to look three-dimensional 
because they just keep adding more white to them thinking that'll help the problem. And so um, what I like to do is this actually makes a really nice kind of gray shadow color, but you want to mix something that's a little warmer and you know more daisy-ish. So I'll take some of this white and I'll mix a little brown oxide into it. So you see it's a little warmer and it's a little sap green. And that gives you sort of a nice neutral warm white that's darker and a couple shadow colors. So if you mix some brown oxide and sap into the white, now I can go back and if I'm looking at the shadow here and I really squint down with your squint with your eyes when you look at your your reference because then you'll see that your eye will break down the values easier. So if I go in now with something in that shadow area like this, you can see it's darker, but it still needs to go darker. So I'm going to add a little more green, a little more brown oxide. You'll notice when I mix color, um, I, another tip is don't go right into the middle of this puddle, save that color. Just kind of put it near the edge like this. Then you can kind of, you get a few different uh, grayish, you know, whites to work with versus if I keep putting it in the middle, then I kind of, I just have one big puddle. So now I have some different values to work with. So I can go in and kind of, you can pull from the inside out like this, you know, and get some more of that darker shadow color in there. And another thing, um, and then there's some here. So if I look at this, this is all real light here and darker over here. So I'm gonna just kind of keep it simple for now like that. And then I'm gonna add a little cobalt blue in there. And you can drag a little bit of blue into the shadow there. And I wanna get that center a little darker. So I'll just use some sap green. And then I can go and get some white here. Add a little tiny touch of that Indian yellow to it. That'll give it a more radiant white color. And you can put some of that highlight back on there. And I'm using a number four flat for this. You might want to, you could start smaller if you wanted to. And then some of the tips have a little highlight, you know, on them like this. So you can go and kind of shape some of those more daisy edges there. And get a little of that light green and put a bit of a highlight on that side. And then another thing when painting daisies, um, say I wanted to go back in and shape a little more. I use the background color. So if I had a black or whatever my background, I'll just use this gray that I painted down. I'm gonna be able to cut into that daisy some nice, really nice petal shapes like this. Using that background color. So you can kind of shape some of these more, those edges that kind of look a little bit more square or you want to just sort of, you know, 
loosen some of the edges up. You can cut that background color into them like that. Now this is not the best looking <laughs> daisy I've ever painted, but it's the idea is what I'm trying to teach you more the method here. But um, go and put a few little sparks of light here and there like that. So, and then you can add a little bit of that cobalt to the white and just get a lighter and a lighter bluish highlight in there. And something that kind of looks good, you just take a little brown oxide or red oxide and kind of put in a little bit of that in the center there. And that really makes that pop out there. So I hope that that helps. Um, as far as doing daisies in acrylic, it's very similar to my process in oil. But um, yeah, I hope that you try this video out in, even if you're using acrylic, you can um, get all the same colors that I use in the video in oil, you can get them in acrylic. So I try to match that so that you can always try them in both mediums. Um, just put a little stem in there. And um, so, that's it. It's a short tutorial, but if you want just a quick study to get you in the mood for painting, this would be a good one because daisies are such happy, fresh, fun flowers. So anyhow, I look, look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. And don't forget to uh, sign up on, if you're a member of Patreon, um, you can post to Bold Strokes. If you're not a member yet, you can sign up for more tutorials like this on my Patreon channel for uh, as little as $10 a month. Thank you for watching.